In this episode, I'm going to be telling you about Sora, the OpenAI new tool, how it works, and why it works as good as it does. To explain this, I want you to have these two sentences of frame. Number one, Sora doesn't understand physics and how it frames our reality. And then the second thing is, Sora is really good at his job, with even in the lack of understanding physics. Let me explain the four fundamentals. So what's up people, people of the internet, boys and girls. One genuine problem I face as a regular podcast listener is finding another interesting podcast I can listen to. And you know that can be handful and you know, you know, now there's all the stress around it. So that's why I bring to you what's podcasting people! Yeah, 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 what's podcasting, what's podcasting, what's podcasting. So it's just an overview low bar newsletter that people in tech, gigs, babes, nerds, and maybe your mom would love, you know, um, that kind of shit. So kindly check the link in the description and sign up for receive three new podcast recommendations every week that you will definitely not love. Um, but you can never know unless you try, you know? That's why you're still single. Anyway, um, don't worry. Bye. Bye-bye. Making videos is a tricky thing. It's one of, the, it's one of those high top levels that you would want your AI to achieve. And Sora can make incredibly stunning videos in 60 seconds. <clears throat> I'm sure you are familiar with such time. Anyway, it's really good at making videos that people think is fake. It takes simple text and gives you high realistic videos, similar to how DALL-E, Midjourney, or um, Bing AI can give you video, give you images from just text. But this guy takes in text and gives you images. The first thing you should have in mind is the training data. Now, it's similar to asking somebody where did you use school i will explain you see i like to start from the fundamental thing like the busy most valuable information you need that helps you out throughout the whole conversation so this is just a fancy way of saying hey sora um what is it you are learning from you're having a conversation with somebody and then they decide it's like one time i was chatting with this babe i was just having a random conversation with Anna. this is a really fine babe that i believe has sense and then I asked her, you know, what do you think about the world being spherical? And she goes, oh, it's not, it's flat. And then the next thing that comes to my mind is, where the f did you school? That's the same thing, it's the same thing we're doing here now. Training data. Where did Sora learn from? Where did it school that it can make videos from? Inside the name of your university in the comment section now. You, know. you see, in 2021, Shutterstock, which is the stock library, like one of the best stock libraries out there that is paid, Shutterstock had a deal with OpenAI. This deal allowed OpenAI to use Shutterstock library of stock images, videos to train its AI. The reason why most of the images you can get sometimes when you hack for a realistic image feels like a stock image, you know where it's coming from now. You see, in 2023 again, this deal was renewed extending the partnership with OpenAI for six more years. Nigga, six years! Like, these guys, and this is a very, really, really important fact to note, is because knowing where training data is coming from and where Sora, which is the AI, is learning how to create videos from, helps frame the way Sora itself on the long run learns. So, Sora is learning from stock images and stock videos from short stock. There's a lot of stock here. I can slip in stock for somewhere. Nobody will even notice if I said shit or not. Not doing that. Now, the next thing is learning itself and aka, we call this in text based model architecture. You see, take for example, when you ask the babe, what school did you go to? Like when I asked her, hey, what school did you go to? And she opens her mouth and tells me something. Um, in this case, she mentioned the university, I would try and avoid. So, all you students not come and drag me. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's nice. Um, what, course did you, what course did you study while you were in school? So now we're asking Sora, you went to Shota Stock, right? Oh, that's a university for where they teach you video and all of that and stock images. What did you learn? And then, you know, oh, how did you learn it? And then Sora is now like, oh yeah, I learned how to compress files into smaller chunks. That was the major thing I learned from watching all the videos that it taught me at Shota Stock. And let me explain what this means. It's like when I asked this girl what she studied, guess what she said? She went to school and she studied in Tyrell. Yeah, I can't, I can't really blame her. She thinks the world is flat. But yeah, now it's the same thing we're doing here. You see, to explain how GPT, how Sora creates or learns how video creation works or how videos work, 
I need to explain to you how GPT works in a nutshell. So take a step back, have a bottle of wine, bottle water, in this case, <laughs> you see that pure water, hold it and listen. So for GPT to transcribe or give you the text or all the meaning of something, like for example, you ask GPT, explain how rain falls, and then GPT takes that text and explains it to you. For that to happen, it takes in the text, explain how rain falls, and breaks it down into smaller chunks. And in the text space, we refer to these smaller chunks as tokens. It breaks it down into smaller tokens, and then these tokens is what it gets into his brain now. It has a big brain, which are called large language models. Think about large language models as pieces of dominoes in different places, different that connects all together to make one thing. So that's how the brain is. Now it takes it into his large language model, understand each part of the sentence, uh, explain how rain falls, each part of the sentence, and then brings it in contrast to how you ask it and gives you an answer. It can be a really long thing, but stay with me. That's how it works in essence, right? Now what happened is by breaking it down into tokens, it analyzes the whole sentence and figures out its meaning. For Sora, it does the same thing. It takes these videos that Sora Stock is feeding it and breaks each videos down into smaller chunks. You can refer to these chunks as latent spaces. That's how they are called, latent spaces. Um, another analogy is to look at this you know when you watch Spider-Man? Oh yes, Dune 2 is out. For guys who like Dune and Deadpool Trilla is also out. Now I'm a Marvel fan, I always hype Marvel. You see, Soria is giving or is learning thrillers. He's breaking the videos out into smaller chunks, which you can refer to them as smaller thrillers of each video that has the facts of each video. He's not just shutting it or compressing it. Each section, right? has its own smaller chunks and is making multiple of these smaller thrillers that has the whole meaning of the video and it doesn't stop there. Sora takes each thriller and breaks it down into another thriller. It's like when I listen to a podcast on uh, most podcasting, I break it down into a newsletter and then break it down into a social media post. The essence is to see capture the very importance of the podcast but from breaking it down into a newsletter yeah, this was a segue to say, check the link in the description to subscribe to Watch Podcast and I get other awesome podcast recommendations for free. Now, I break it down into a newsletter, then break that newsletter down into a you know, social media post. And that's how it works. So, Soria learns about a video, breaks it down into small chunks called latent spaces, then breaks each latent space down into another small chunk called space time patches. It simply is like breaking down for science students. It breaks down those smaller chunks. For science students, you can refer to breaking down a molecule into an atom and then an atom into protons and neutrons. It breaks it down and that's into the most essential parts of each component while still maintaining the very importance. Yeah, so that's why it's called space-time patches. And let me explain the reason behind the space-time patches. Um, these patches like little pieces of videos that are captured both space. The space here is each frame of the video and time here is how each frame changes over time. It's like looking like a baby picture of yourself from before and after and then you can see or you can mentally contrast the difference between you when you are fat and from here and after. You know, I could tell from the conversation I was having with this girl that when the time I asked her, hey, how how was you know what school did you go to and she replied me and i asked her oh, what, what course did you study and she replies me you know entire and now she can tell that before she's mentioned the earth was flat you know after i've asked her all these things she can tell that i doubt her like i you know i have serious doubt about if she went to school or like you know um, if you actually does the job so yeah that's basically the same thing in this space it breaks these videos down into patches and then looks at each patches each frame in the space of time, right? okay, this frame is changing to this time and this and this. So taking taking the videos, making them smaller to understand, and breaking them down into little chunks that capture what is happening and how it changes over time. Back to my story, this guy already has a feeling of oh, there's a difference between when this guy asks me this and when the, the tone of the conversation has changed. And then she's now asking me like, where are you going with this? So I, I didn't reply. What I simply just told her was like, no, um, nothing. You saw the entire, which is, which is a nice course, to be honest. Um, but 
how did you come about the idea of the SS flat? You know, how did that come to something that you agree with? I'll tell you how I reply. This is the next phase of Sora. Is how does Sora generate videos? How does Sora learn from the videos which I've explained? And now how does it generate what from what it has learned? Like <laughs> basically the same thing I'm asking this babe, like, you know. How did you come about this idea? For Sora, the key thing here is to have in consideration the text or this phrase called reprompting and remember it. To create a good quality image from anywhere, right? Um, one major factor is the level of computing power that it requires. And when I say compute, I mean the level of hardware machinery needed to run the computer that executes the code for generating these videos. You see, when you try to play a game on your computer, and, the and then they say, oh, the computer can carry the game. Or when you want to buy a laptop, they'll be like, oh, you need a laptop. What do you want to do with it? I want to play a game. I want to do text. I'm like, okay, this laptop can do this. It's the level of power. It's the hardware, you know, um, that this can continue. For if I'm to take this compute example and put it together in my conversation with this girl, it's like asking the girl, what's your IQ? What's the level of compute that your brain can carry? to generate the list. So the higher the IQ, the higher the, the information about the, uh, how and uh, why the earth is flat. I, I don't know how high your IQ can be to give that answer, but that is not, that's not, the, that's not the question here. Back to Sora. The thing here is the higher the compute power, the higher the quality of the images and the accuracy in the image. When you give Sora a text, which is the most important part, the reprompting part is, for example, you give Sora a text that says, give me a video with a man holding a basketball. Before that text reaches Sora, it goes through a reprompting scenario, a space where GPT takes in that text and generates new prompts from that text. This new prompt is a more detailed explanation of the text you gave it, carrying more information. And now that is the prompt that sends to GPT. It's like a child telling their sibling that please, I broke the plate and don't tell mommy. Or I broke the plate, help me tell mommy in a way that she won't beat me. And then you carry that information and then you go and tell mommy, hey mommy, what's up now? How you doing now? You see, um, I just finished buying um, water in the house. Me and Daniel went to carry it. So yeah, and she's like, oh, thank you very much. I'm like, okay, oh, by the way, sorry, Daniel mistakenly broke the yellow plate in the kitchen that is sitting on top of the cabinet close to the granite and where you keep onions. It fell down when the everywhere was dark and it broke. You see, your own explanation of the plate breaking is more detailed than Daniel saying, this plate just broke, help me tell mommy. That's what GPT does. It takes in that text of, uh, give me a video of a man holding a basketball and breaks it down into something more explanatory. Like, give me a video of a man, give me a video of a dark-skinned man holding a brown basketball in an open court with people sitting on the sideline and the environment is bright and the ball is about to go in or, you know. Yeah, you see, this is a more detailed explanation. That is the message that gets into Sora. And that is what Sora sees. And so, with his knowledge from understanding space-time patches and then latent um, all those biblical English I was mentioning earlier, it generates a video in that liking from what it has learned from Shutterstock and how to make videos and how videos work. Then it just gives you an example. You see, when I asked this babe to tell me how she came about the idea that the world is flat, um, her response was one of the most fascinating things. I can't judge if it's smart or not, but her response was it is flat, it's not curved. And she's like, yeah, you know, um, if you really look at it, if you enter a plane, the plane doesn't curve, um, the plane flies up, straight, down. You see, that's how it works, which is basically not it's curving. If not, every time we're in a plane, we'll be experiencing curvature. Now, I understand that sounds like a reasonable thing to say, but it's unscientifically wrong. And there's a nation, the YouTube videos about the flat ethers and how the world has an end um, were just not there yet. That water falls from every edge down into space. Which I which I'm listening to her and I'm like, now I'm not listening to her and learning anything. I'm listening to her and I'm asking myself what is the implication and impact of what she's telling me to my own senses? Is it reducing my own IQ or what? And that leads me to the next thing.
what is the impact and implication of Sora? Now, in the last episode, I talked about Nightshade and just exactly that is what I'm going to say today. Or similar to what I said about Nightshade is Sora is a two-edged sword. Sora is dangerous, very dangerous, and also very good. Now, Sora opens up the door for custom stock images that are free, that creators can use in making images and videos. Sorry, videos. Sora also opens the door for us to simulate ideas faster, see what works, and how to even test out camera angles and scenes before even shooting these videos. After all of this, Sora also puts us in a position to question what is real and what is not. Like listening to this babe tell me the earth is flat. Every reality that we experience is real to us. And it's real to her. It's, it's rubbish, but it's real to her. This also brings us into is these videos that Sora creates can confuse reality for most of the people who are watching it. Because these videos are real human shit, my guy. They are not 3D stuff. They are real human shit. There's an example of how he merged a video of a peacock and a video of a chameleon to look like a new creature that is just it's, it's beautiful it's not it's not disgusting it's, it's like if you watch this very well detailed and it looks real it looks real like a real insect real animal that is catastrophic that is the power of what it can generate fake shit now imagine the amount of sexual atrocities and allegations that this thing can cause if it gets into the wrong hands my conclusion to this on how we conclude my story with this girl is I simply told her that reality is a story we tell ourselves. And I agree to the story you are telling yourself on how the earth is flat. If that helps you sleep well at night, I think it's a reality you should consider. But I don't think it's a reality you should base your facts on. And that's similar to how I will end this conversation. This tool is good. It can merge clips together. It can make things feel so real. You can give it an idea. And it can merge three different scenarios to have one cohesive ending. And it feels real, to be honest. It's a big deal, I'm not going to lie. But my question to you guys is, what do you think, first of all, about if the earth is flat and what this girl is telling me? And then secondly is, if Sora gets into the hands of many people, what do you think is going to happen? What would you do with you if you had access to Sora? That, that brings me to the end. Kindly do not forget to like and subscribe if you like this episode. Leave a comment in the section and um, ask us to any of the questions you've had. And subscribe to what's podcast on your YouTube app. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next episode. And we'll be talking about this fair, which is in Vegas, or basically how Shazlam works. So what's up, people? People of the internet, boys and girls. One genuine problem I face as a regular podcast listener is finding another interesting podcast I can listen to. And you know that can be handful, and you know, you know, now there's all the stress around it. So that's why I bring to you what's podcasting, people! Yeah, 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 what's podcasting, what's podcasting, what's podcasting. So it's just an overarching low bar music that, that people in tech, gigs, babes, nerds, and maybe your mom would love, you know, um, that kind of shit. So kindly check the link in the description and sign up and receive three new podcast recommendations every week that you will definitely not love. Um, but you can never know unless you try, you know? That's why you're still single. Anyway, um, don't worry. Bye. Bye-bye.